Oh, hello. I hope you're well today. I've been making a sample for slow stitching workshop that I have coming up, and I thought I would share my process with you. This time we're going to be making a scrappy bird, and here are a few different versions. thought you'd like to see what we were going to make. I thought it would be fun to see if we could make our scrappy birds out of a random blob. So we're going to start out by drawing some random blobs and see if we can indeed turn those into bird shapes just by adding a beak. And here are some examples of different beak shapes depending on what kind of bird and what task they use their beak for. So I'm going to add a beak, an eye, some legs and wings to my first blob and I think that looks pretty bird-like. I think that anybody looking at it would say that that's a bird. And now let's see what I can do with the other blob there. Now I don't have to keep it the, the way that I drew it. I can turn it around and see if I can find something that looks vaguely bird-like to me in any orientation. So let's try in this direction. And I've got a different shaped wing there and an eye, of course. And I'm going to do the legs slightly different. This bird's going to have long legs before I put the claws on the bottom there. And there you go, two different birds made out of completely random blobs. And now we'll move on to the cloth part of this activity, the actual sewing part. So I could use one of those blobs that I drew to as a template to cut out my bird. But I think I'm just going to wing it and cut out another blob and see if I can make this new blob into, into a bird. Let's see. I'm just cutting out a pretty random blob and I'm not making it too complicated because I want it to be easy to stitch. So it's vaguely egg shape, sort of a lopsided egg shape. And look, I can even place it over top of the bird that I drew and you can see you can see how that will become a bird. Now I'm going to be working on this hexagon because I'm collecting a series of hexagons based on workshops that I've been doing but you could work this on anything you want. You could put it on a piece of clothing. You could even make two blobs that are mirror images and stuff it and make a little stuffed bird if you like. So but here I'm sewing my my blobby scrap down onto my hexagon and I'm just using a whip stitch which means that I'm just going starting right at the edge of the cloth and then taking a stitch into the cloth and then around and around and around all the way around the bird and I'm staying quite close to the edge. This stitch is really easy to do and it encases the raw edge off the cloth so it'll help to prevent prevent things from fraying too much and it creates a nice edge I mean it's not you'll definitely see the stitches but I think that if you're going to go through the trouble of doing all these hand stitches that you want people to to see them and I've got a fun fun piece of embroidery thread here. I'm using two strands, which is my standard go-to. And this one is variegated, which means there's lots of different colors. And this particular one coordinates really nicely with the purples and greens and blues in the piece of cloth that I chose. It's got blues and greens and pinks in it. And it's, it creates a bit of a contrast and it's a nice, nice combination. And you could do whatever you want. If you wanted your stitches to really show up, you could choose a thread that's a strong contrast with your, the cloth that you're sewing sewing on but and if you wanted them to show up less you could cho choose a thread that matches more closely with the cloth that you're using and I'm just going all the way around my shape here so that it is secured down and I I've mentioned this before in previous videos that I don't use any pins or anything to hold the cloth in place. I find that after I've got a few stitches done, it'll stay in place and I tend to get my threads bound up on any pins or anything that I use. Mm -hmm. 
Now I just have this little teeny tiny scrap of cloth sitting on my desk and it's a slightly different color from the blob and I thought hmm, maybe this could become a beak or even a wing and I think I'm going to use it as a wing. It's big enough to make a small wing. <laughs> my bird has it's a flightless bird with a small wing and that teeny little bit that I cut off there that seems to work as a beak as well so I'm going to use those two pieces of cloth and again you could do whatever you like if you wanted to have a beak and wing that are very a very strong contrast you could use a piece of cloth that's completely different or if you want them to blend more you could use the same cloth that you used for the body so i'm going to start out by sewing on that beak and again i'm just holding it there with my thumb until i get a few stitches in and then it's not going to go anywhere it's just going to stay where it is so i'm using the same thread but and the same stitch the sort of whip stitch overcast stitch but this time instead of going around the edge what i'm going to do is i'm going to create all the stitches in the same direction so that it's got a strong direction from the body of the bird out to the tip of the beak and I'll just make all my stitches going in that direction making sure that I go right over that really pointy end there so that it's it's the the tip of that that really sharp point at the tip of the beak is secured well so it's not going to fray or flop around but by creating my stitches in that in that direction it kind of gives a, a smooth texture it's um, sometimes called a satin stitch or a long and short stitch and that's used in embroidery to create a smooth texture instead of something that's all jumbled and when I finish the beak I'm going to move on to the wing and now I can place the wing however I like but I'm just going to have it sticking out a little bit off the edge off the body there so you can really see that there's a wing there sometimes the wings will just be sitting right on the body but I'm this is just the way that I decided to do this and I'm going to do the same thing <laughs> deal with my knotted thread here which happens and if you work work with it gently you can you sometimes get rid of that knot but you might have to cut it out and start over and I'm, again same stitch just that whip stitch over and over and over again holding the, the piece, the wing in place with my thumb there until it's secured down and I'll just go all the way around. And again, there's a sharp point on the end of the wing that, I, that I've created. So I'll make sure that that's well secured down just like I did with the beak. And now you might be wondering why I've got some lines of stitches on the hexagon there. Well, behind my hexagon, I've got I've got a piece of quilt batting because this is what I what's called a quilt as you go hexagon. I'm making individual hexagons and I'll after I finish doing all the sewing, I'll put a backing on there and there'll be a piece of quilt batting in between the two layers that I'm actually stitching through. I find it gives a nice surface and it prevents my my piece from from puckering up. It keeps the the cloth really firm because you may also have noticed that I don't use a hoop. I really like to use the most simple tools, just the cloth, the sewing needle, and my thread, and that's it. And so now I've gone all the way around and my wing is attached. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a decoration. If I've got more thread left when I finished sewing down a piece, I'll look for another place to to use it and I thought oh some birds have a little tuft at the top of their head peacocks noticeably this is definitely not a peacock not a peacock shaped bird but also quail definitely also not a quail shaped bird but I thought I would give this little bird some tufts on the top of its head maybe representing some decorative feathers up there and I'm using detached chain stitch just individual chain stitches to add those those little tufts there. So the chain stitches, you come out, you form a loop, go back into the same hole and then secure that loop, bring your thread up through the loop. And now I've still got a little bit of thread there. So I'm going to use the rest of it to create an eye, but I think I'd like this eye to be a little bit more substantial. So I'm going to fiddle around to double up the thread a little bit. And it turns out that was perhaps not not the best choice and I don't quite have enough thread but I'm just going to persevere and use it 
to make a little French knot, which you make by bringing your thread up, then wrapping your thread around the needle a couple of times before passing the needle back into the cloth. And that makes a little knot. And this one's kind of a scruffy little knot, which is probably perfect for a scrappy little bird. And there you go. There's my little bird, my legless bird here. And then I thought about this. And this is another thing that I do. I don't plan out my pieces entirely in advance. I, I let things emerge. I give space for things to emerge as I go. And initially I thought I was going to have my bird perhaps standing on the ground. But I think I've changed my mind and decided to create a branch for my bird to be standing on. And I have this other piece, not quite a scrap, a larger piece of cloth left over from something else. And I'm just going to cut out a fairly long, irregular shape that I'm going to turn into a branch. And you notice it's wider on one end. So that could be the end that's closer to the trunk of the tree, but I'm actually going to turn that into a branched, a branched branch. So now I've got a little branch there and that bit that I've pulled out well, that could be another branch sticking out from the bottom there. I like that. So now I'm going to sew that, the sew my branch down, and I've gone back. I'm using, I'm still using the, the same variegated thread that I was using to sew on the bird, and I'm not worried about the colors being realistic or, or, tree colored at all. I'm. I'm just not worried about that. This is not a realistic bird and the branch does not have to be realistic. So by using the same color thread, I'm tying the two pieces together, but even really that's not necessary either. And I'm just at this point going to put one row of stitches onto my branch, which is like a basting stitch or a tacking stitch that will hold everything in place. But as I go along, I will add more stitches, probably not in this video, but the same way, just a running stitch in, out, in, out along the length of the tree or along the length of the branch. And the more, the more, the more rows of stitching I add, the more texture and interest that branch will have and it's a good way to use up leftover bits of thread if you've got some thread left over from other projects or as you're doing your stitching if you've got a bit of thread left just throw that on the branch and that will add to the texture and bark like appearance of the branch and you know you'll notice that there was a very strong pattern on this branch and it doesn't really matter you can't tell what the pattern was before and it's just adding visual interest and variation in the color on this branch here. So I'm going along all parts of it, all of the the branches that come off the other branch to make sure that they're all secure down and in place. And part of the reason from the part of the reason that I make these samples before the class is so that I know approximately how long things are going to take. Now the last thing I'm going to add here are the legs on my bird. And the legs on birds typically start fairly far back and they slant forward, which is the opposite to the way that human legs bend at the knee but bend backwards. So again, I'm not really going for for realism here. I'm and this is a long-legged bird. I don't know. It's a rather rotund and long-legged bird. I'm using stem stitch to to create these legs. So it's a nice straight stitch. I find that it works well for straight lines. It creates a solid line too. So my first leg angle slightly forward and when I get to the branch, I'm adding some some little straight stitches down at the bottom to represent the the bird's claws down there that are holding on to the branch there. And then I decided that I wanted the the leg to be a little bit 
a little bit thicker up near the body. So I'm going back up and adding a few stitches up near the body to the leg to make it a little bit, a little bit more robust up at the top. And then I've got another piece of that pink thread there. Again, two, two strands of the embroidery floss. I think these were both left over from another project. And I'm putting the second leg parallel to the first leg, just in front of it. And I'll do the same thing. So the, the, the stitch that I'm using, again, is called stem stitch. And the way that works is you take a long stitch forward, and then you go halfway back along that stitch and come up halfway along the stitch and then you take another long stitch forward and then you go back to the previous stitch and you just keep going back and forth till you get till your line is as long as you want it to be and again a few little straight stitches at the bottom to represent the bird's claws and my little scrappy bird is done and now this little bird is over to one side and I haven't added anything else yet because I think that I'm going to do my class demo. I'm going to add a second bird, but I could certainly do something else. I could put a little bird's nest there or some leaves or something to fill up that space. Anyway, thanks for watching again and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. <music>